Welcome back to Focus on Health. In case you're joining us right now, we're still creating awareness on the Men's Health Awareness Month. And our topic today is prostate cancer and testicular cancer. So, Dr. Tari, maybe you could pick it up from where we left. Dr. Tari, it is unlike, you know, men to go for regular checkups, you know, just because. And even when they experience these symptoms, they may not also go for the diagnosis. So now as we celebrate this Men's Health Month and even, you know, during other months, how do we encourage them to go for regular checkups? Okay, I think um, the most important thing is uh, just to change behavior, okay? Because most of the time men usually feel uh, maybe more macho or more masculine behavior. But it's always good, it's always good uh, for the men to feel encouraged uh, to be able to have healthy and good health seeking behavior. So, this unfortunately is it boils down to individual uh, decision making and individual way of thinking. But it's always a kind of encouragement to adopt good health seeking behavior mm -hmm. and just present themselves to a CBT to be checked and helped. So Dr. Ari, we've talked about encouraging the men to go for regular checkups, but how often should they go for these regular checkups? Uh, for the regular checkups here mainly um, it's when we are looking at the older men, okay, because most young men, majority of them are usually healthy. Problems usually start as we grow older, okay. So for the elderly men, it's always good at least once a year. If someone has no health issues, it's good to just go once a year, just do a checkup, what we call an executive checkup. Check your blood pressure, your blood glucose levels and all that. And one of the tests would be the PSA especially if someone is above uh, 50 years. Uh, however, for prostate cancer, if someone has a family history of prostate cancer, then it's always good to start slightly earlier at 40, okay? And uh, just to do this PSA test uh, on an annual basis or by annual basis, basically. Maybe now, Dr. Tari, you could take us through the diagnosis process after you've already been, you know, uh, identified with some of the symptoms. How do you go through the diagnosis of prostate cancer and testicular cancer? Okay, so first it will depend with the individual patient themselves. They'll have some symptoms, okay? And when they have these symptoms, they'll present themselves to the hospital. Um, what the doctor will do is take a history and then do a physical examination. And when you look at prostate cancer, the main physical examination that is important here is a digital rectal exam. And this is where the doctor uses their digit, their finger, and starts hitting the rectum just to feel the prostate because that's the most accessible uh, path to examine the prostate. And when the doctor feels abnormality of the prostate, maybe if it's indurated, it feels rough or larger or asymmetrical in the two lobes then he would do some imaging and uh, this imaging can either be an ultrasound or an MRI and uh, once they look at the, this imaging and find that there are high risk features suggesting of cancer then the doctor will do a biopsy and this is the ultimate diagnosis because uh, the biopsy is a process where you get a tissue to take to the lab for histological evaluation and therefore to check if they are cancer cells or not. For the testicular cancer, again, the patient will have symptoms, present to the hospital, the doctor will take a history and examine the patient. And here, the main focus of examination is on the scrotum to check both testes, okay, to feel if their one is enlarged. And uh, after this, then, they'll, they'll be sent for a, a scan. And here, the main scan of choice is uh, ultrasound. And there are usually specific characteristic features of testicular cancer in an ultrasound. And if this is evident, then they would not go for a biopsy, but they would go for surgery to remove uh, the afflicted testes for evaluation. And once it's evaluated in the lab, then it will be able to uh, diagnose this, uh, this disease. What happens after we diagnose these diseases? Uh, we usually do what we call staging. And in staging, basically, you want to understand, fine, I know I have this testicular cancer, this prostate cancer, how advanced or how localized is it, okay? So staging basically um, uh, entails uh, scans, okay? For testicular cancer, CT scans will be done for the whole body, mainly the chest and abdomen. And also for testicular cancer, we use 
some blood tests called tumor markers. Uh, there are various markers in the blood that we check, also which are diagnostic and also help in staging. Um, for prostate cancer, different images can be used for staging, from MRI of the pelvis, CT scans of the chest and abdomen. There's also what we call a bone scan. And a bone scan is a special scan that scans the entire skeletal uh, of the individual to see if the cancer is spread to the bones. Because a prostate cancer, uh, if it is to spread somewhere, mostly it's in the bones. Uh, nowadays we have a more advanced, more specific imaging modality called a PET scan, which can be done uh, for prostate cancer. Specifically, it's a PSMA PET scan and this is able to characterize the disease and make sure and ascertain whether or not it has spread to other parts of the body. And once we, will, we have staged the disease, then we can come up with a planning, uh, a treatment plan, uh, depending on the different stages of this disease. Dr. Ryu, what risks are we staring at if maybe you get diagnosed too late? Okay, um, the problem with diagnosing cancer late is it doesn't wait for you to diagnose it early. It, it continues growing, it continues getting worse, it continues advancing. And there's a process in oncology we call metastasis. This is when cancer spreads from the original organ to any other part of the body. Could be the brain, could be the lungs, could be the liver, could be the lymph nodes in the abdomen. So the problem with cancer that has spread is that, especially for prostate, this is cancer that is incurable, and if something is incurable, then the ultimate risk is death. Okay, so that is the ultimate risk that we, we awaits us when we diagnose these uh, diseases late. And for <coughs> the same also applies uh, to testicular cancer and overall in any cancer. So early diagnosis, good health seeking behavior is really encouraged uh, when it comes to cancer. So Doctor, is it safe to say that prostate cancer and testicular cancer can actually be cured? Yes, you can get cured from... Actually, most cancers in the world can be cured. Okay, I know people usually feel, okay, cancer is a death sentence, but no. Most cancers are curable. It all depends on at what stage are they. If they are early stages, if they are intermediate stages, then most of them are cured. Okay. So Dr. I know that you've talked about the symptoms, the diagnosis, maybe now you could break it down to us, you know, the treatment method for both prostate cancer and testicular cancer. Okay, so cancer usually is not treated by one doctor, it's usually a team approach, okay, and uh, the main therapeutic experts here are usually surgeons, oncologists, radiologists, pathologists, so it's a whole group of patients, uh, of doctors. But the main treatment for these is either surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, okay. So when we start with the younger age group, testicular cancer, um, treatment number one is surgery because you have to remove the afflicted testes, get it tested, get it diagnosed. And once it is tested, it is able to stratify it at what stage it is, and therefore we take that, uh, our treatment according to the the stage. There are those early stages testicular cancer that don't need any treatment at all after surgery. We just watch and wait, observe them closely, but this usually needs a very cooperative patient. There are those other uh, treatments that will require chemotherapy and other that will require radiotherapy. So it all depends on what stage, but mainly surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. When it comes to prostate cancer, again also, uh, we mainly classify them into three main groups. We have the lower risk, the intermediate risk, and the high risk diseases. So patients with low risk, these are patients who can either be, especially if they have very low risk, they can actually be observed closely every year, follow closely, several tests done, just to make sure that uh, the cancer is not progressing. And on progression, treatment is done. So for these low risk diseases, there are different treatments that can be given. Uh, one of them is surgery, okay. For patients who wouldn't want surgery, then radiotherapy usually can be done in these low risk patients. 
and radiation therapy. We also do it here in uh, Nairobi West Hospital. It can either be an external radiation, what we call external beam radiation, or internal radiation, what we call uh, brachytherapy of the prostate gland. When it goes to intermediate risk disease, then these are patients who can either be operated on or uh, combined uh, uh, surgery with hormonal therapy. And the higher risk patients, then these are patients who uh, we usually combine radiotherapy with hormonal therapy. Once prostate cancer has spread, which we call uh, stage 4 disease, then these are usually patients that we don't really do surgery on. So we go straight to using either hormonal therapy combined with chemotherapy or just hormonal therapy as well. The reason why we use hormonal therapy is because uh, prostate cancer is is really driven by the male hormone testosterone. So one of the greatest ways of treating this cancer is by suppressing the testosterone and therefore starving uh, these cancer cells of, 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 of this uh, important hormone. So basically in a nutshell that's how we treat these diseases. Thank you so much Dr. Ari for that detailed information. So maybe now even as you wind up we can have your parting shot to our viewers generally regarding testicular cancer and prostate cancer. Well, the uh, first thing is uh, just to encourage uh, the men that first of all cancer is not necessarily um, a death sentence, okay, there is help and uh, cancer is curable uh, and it all depends on when we get it, so we cannot overemphasize about the importance of going to hospital for regular checkups or when someone feels sick not to stay at home. Uh, the second thing is just to <clears throat> um, encourage them that currently in Kenya we are able to treat uh, most cancers, okay? So it's no need to travel out for most of these treatments. They are all available locally. And thirdly, at Nairobi West, we are always ready to take care of these patients. And that's why we are here, that's why we wake up uh, in the morning every day. Thank you so much, Dr. Ari, for your time. We've learned a lot and we are looking forward to having more sessions with you as we talk about men's health. That is all the time we had for today. Thank you so much for your feedback on our social media platforms and thank you so much for tuning in to Focus on Health. And as Dr. Ari has said, prostate cancer and testicular cancer does have a cure. So let us encourage our men to go for regular checkups and diagnoses as early as possible. I've been your host, Bwari Michelle. Make sure you hit us up on our social media platforms at KUTV Focus on Health and Facebook and YouTube and Health Focus on on Instagram. Until next time, stay safe and and stay healthy. I will leave you with the Health You segment. Prevention of prostate cancer and testicular cancer. Prostate cancer prevention. Eat at least five servings of fruits and vegetables daily and eat less red meat. Decrease fat intake. Tell your doctor about the supplements you take. Exercise regularly. Maintain your ideal weight. Testicular cancer prevention. Most men with testicular cancer have no risk factors and many of the identified risk factors which are age or undescended testes cannot be changed. Treatment If you are diagnosed with prostate or testicular cancer, your doctor will discuss the best option to treat it. This depends on several factors including your age and general health, stage and grade of cancer, whether the cancer has spread, and side effects of the treatment. on health your weekly dose of health and wealth information on KUTV